Welcome back homegrown, this is Christy and today's video I want to talk about flower bugs. I want to talk about what they are, how to treat them, and hopefully how to prevent them. Stick with us. Alright, no matter what type of flower you buy, whether you buy bulk flower or you just buy the five pound bags at the store, nine times out of ten, you've had mealybugs in your home. Mealybugs, or flower beetles as they say, can come in on your pastas, your grains, your flowers, anything that's dried, but mostly your grains and your pastas. Um, they can get in your spices, things like that. What are mealybugs? Well, they have many names. They've been called mealybugs, rice bugs, rice larvae, rice weevils, flower weevils, flower larvae, um, flower beetles, anything like that. So um, these are little bugs that come in your flower from the factory sometimes. Sometimes they can enter your items while they're in the pantry. So how does this happen? Well, a mealybug has different stages of its life. It has a larvae stage and then it has um, like kind of a beetle stage. It might have more in between there, but main two, I know when the grain is growing in the field, sometimes the female beetle will lay larvae in the grain. And then when that's harvested, that is in it, and it ends up in the factory during the milling process. So sometimes that's how they end up in your food. So it's already there when you purchase it. Sometimes it ends up coming through the packaging, and yes, they can come through the packaging. The flower beetle has very strong jaws. It's meant to get through the grains of rice or the grains of uh, your grain that you have. So it can chew through paper, cardboard, plastic packaging, things like that. So it can be in the warehouse, it can be in the store, and come right through that packaging into your item that you have. Then when you get it in your home and open it up, it can spread into your pantry, into other items. So today, what I'm hoping is to show you how to prevent or maybe even how to treat flower or mealy bugs. So if you've ever wondered if you've had mealy bugs in your home, some of the signs of it are if you have spider web looking um, material in, say, your flower, it just looks like a little coating or a little web like coating over it. You can even find little bug body parts in your flower. I know that's gross, but sometimes, you know, when they uh, shed or they expand, or maybe even when they die, the little body parts end up in your flower. And sometimes, if you have a box of something, say, um, pasta or something like that, or a bag with flour, and you find this little powdery pile underneath of the bag of the box, something's probably gotten in there and has been chewing its way through, and that's the little flowery, grainy bits left over and falling out from them eating through your product. So here is a few ways of how you can treat or maybe even prevent if you have mealybugs. If you're like me, I like to buy in bulk, so today I went to our local Amish store and bought a 50 pound bag of our baker's flour, um, all kind of like our all purpose flour. And in their store, similar kind of like a warehouse, you walk in and they're shelving and they just kind of have things stacked up. So the chances are they probably are going to be mealybugs in here. It can come from, like I said, the manufacturer, it could come from storage, and it can also come from our own home. They can crawl through cracks, crevices of your windows and your doors and get into your home that way too. Um, so what I'm going to do with this bag here is until I get to it, I want to store this in my freezer for one week. That will kill any larvae, any beetles that are already in the product itself. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this big baby down and put it in the freezer and leave it for one week. But I already have some flour stored, so when I put this in the freezer, we're going to come back up and I'm going to show you my flour that we already have stored and what I'm doing to hopefully try to prevent keeping flower beetles from getting into my products at home. Alright, so we're going to go put this in the freezer and we'll be right back. 
Okay, I've got it downstairs, and earlier I straightened up the freezer so I had enough space for this bag because we've been shuffling things around. So I'm going to open this up, put it in here. And as you can see, there's a kind of a hole here in space. Drop it down in there like that and leave it in here for a week. As we said, storing your flour in the freezer for a week will help to get the mealy bugs out of that. It will kill the larvae and the beetles. Some other ways that you can maybe prevent them from getting into your products is as soon as you bring them home, especially after you've opened them, put them in a glass or a plastic container. Um, this is a mason jar with a lid. My mason jars are precious to me, so I save things like this old cranberry juice jar. Pop the lid off, wash them, and this will make a great jar to store anything in, whether it be liquids or powders. And this is an old spaghetti jar with a lid. You can pour the items down in here. Of course, if you've got a 50 pound bag of flour, it's going to be a lot harder to store that in something like this. If you're only doing the 5 pound bags, this wouldn't be too bad. Um, this is a half gallon jar that I got off of Amazon that I'm storing my lavender buds in. Something like this might work if you only do the 5 pound bags. But if you do the 50 pound bags like I do, I have containers like these. And I love these containers. And the three largest bulk items that we usually buy is sugar, rice, and flour. And these I like because they fit perfectly under my shelving and they have tight fitting lids. I'm going to show you that here in a second. These containers I purchased at Tractor Supply for about $20 a piece. And this was a few years ago. So I'm not even sure if they still carry these. I have seen them at a Rule King. But um, the price, I'm not exactly sure about. But I want to show you how I store my flour. Okay, this is my flour container. And I've stored flour like this for quite a while. And I've had no, no problems with flour bugs or mealy bugs. And I wanted, to, I wanted you to listen to this. Hear that suction on that lid? This is very tight. And like I said, I got these at Tractor Supply. You can get these at a Royal King. They have a super tight fitting lid. And how I store mine... This container will actually store a 50 pound bag of flour, um, but typically I will put a 55 gallon trash bag in here, the industrial type. I put it down in my trash bag, and then I pour the flour down inside here, and I have my scoop in here too. But what won't fit in here, which there'll probably be a little bit that won't fit, and I fill my containers. I have a container up here with my jars, and then I also have a container on the counter, which is my quick grab flour jar that I have there. Um, so when I'm not using my flat, this is basically my bulk container. So what I'll do is if I need flour in my jar out there and it's empty, which I have a big canister, I'll twist off the lid, come in here, and scoop out of this to put in here. So this is kind of like my bulk storage for upstairs. And then when I'm done, I put my scoop down in there, twist my bag like this. Whether or not this has anything to do with it, I don't know. I twist my lid, push it, or my bag, put it down on, and then I'll put my lid on. But if you notice, see the little bag hanging from the top? This is a tea bag that has bay leaves in it. And bay helps to also deter flower bugs and mealy bugs. And I've got two bay leaves in here. And all you got it, and it ties nicely to where the handle to the lid is up there. And then just push the lid back on, and then I store this in my pantry. So, other ways to store your flour would be in the freezer for a week. That'll kill, kill the larva and the beetles. Then you have in a, in a container, whether it be a jar, a glass jar, or a metal container like this with the lid. And you can also put bay leaves in a tea bag. And these tea bags you can get very cheap on Amazon, or you can even make your own, and then put bay leaves in there, and that will help to turn them. One method of treatment, if you know you have mealy bugs, is to just do a thorough cleaning. So I have a fairly decent sized pantry. When you start noticing powder or things on the top of your jars or maybe laying in the bottom of your pantry or on your shelving, there's probably a chance if someone didn't spill anything that you have them and they're eating through your packaging or getting into your flour. Or if you notice them in your flour when you're baking. So that would be a good time to clear everything out of your pantry, wash the shelving with a good vinegar water solution, and your lids and your containers, try replacing the box containers for jars. So this is baking soda that comes in a box at the store, and I take everything out of the box. If I can possibly 
keep from having boxes in my pantry, I will take the box, pour everything in a jar, label it, and throw the box in the garbage, and it goes straight out to the burn pile. So that would be a way to treat for mealy bugs. I hope you got some useful information out of this video. I hope you come back to see our future videos. Please hit the subscribe, like button, and the notification if you would like to get more videos like these. I will see you next time.